When I'm with my girl, she be rocking that Wilma Flintstone. When it's time to rock the bed, then I get my bread on. What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG on the YouTube.com. Down there, we like magic, you know, at this point. And today, budget deck tech for you today. We're talking black red aggro. Well, in case you hadn't heard, guys, Marty Vehicles is like a really good deck right now, says everybody. And they're right, you know, it's easily in the top three decks in the format right now. It's a scourge, and it's getting more expensive by the day. Like, people just started dropping veteran motorists from the list and adding walking ballista, which is like a $12 card. So, that's a really expensive deck. And I'm over here thinking that we can like drop a whole color and a bunch of expensive cards and still win a bunch of games and even if we cut the expensive cards like black and red still has a whole bunch of cards that are really really good and highly played right now and are still really cheap like this morning literally on the mtg update there was a link to an article about whether or not we should maybe ban unlicensed disintegration <laughs> and that card is one of the best cards in the format and it's only a quarter a place that'll cost us a buck and it's incredible so we still get to play some some really powerful pieces in this deck. And License isn't the only one. Let me show you what we got. Well, it all starts with a four of Inventor's Apprentice, or Nerd Ape. <laughs> She's sometimes known. It's one of my favorite nicknames in the format right now. But some of the Mardu versions of this deck will only play like a two of, or you'll even see sometimes zero copies of Inventor's Apprentice. But in this deck, we don't have access to Exemplar. We don't have Thraben Inspector. So this is like the best one drop we can play. And, you know, it's one of the better one drops in the format. Anytime you can invest one mana into a two, three, that's awesome. And it's pretty consistent. We have 12 different ways of making this a 2-3 by turn 2 in this deck. So, no-brainer inclusion gets us on board with a pretty good body very early. And she can crew any vehicle in the deck. So, there's that point out, too. But we're going to play another one-drop here. And that's the playset of Bomat Courier. I like Boko more and more as time goes on, man. I've called this the best Raging Goblin ever. I'll stick by that assessment. I really like Raging Goblin. And this has the same stats. One mana, one, one haste. But in this case, we get to pay whatever mana we want. For our Raging Goblin, which is great because, like, we have to keep a relatively budget mana base here. So it's good to pay whatever we want, and this activates all kinds of artifact synergies. You know, we just saw Inventor's Apprentice. There's a license disintegration in the deck. We've got um, Well Fast Engineer. We'll talk about that later. This gives us, like, fodder for PNA Lar. We can sacrifice this to Pia, you know, and keep something from blocking later on. We can, um, there's a lot of stuff, actually. You know, sometimes the ability to sack this and get a couple of cards when you run out of cards is really, really important. So, lots. Lots of stuff that this thing does in this deck. We absolutely need all four, as far as I'm concerned. We're going to play a four of Scrap Heap Scrounger and splurge on the budget just a little bit. Now, don't worry. The budget only reaches about $40, $45 on TCG Player right now. So you're not breaking the bank, you know. We're still taking out most of the expensive stuff. But I think it's important that we leave in Scrap Heap, who... You know, fortunately, is down a couple of dollars. This was a $5 card for a long time. Now he's down to like three twenty-five on TCG Player. A Scrap Heap has a way of ruining Control's day, obviously. Control decks hate this thing so much that they have a lot of different sideboard and even main deck plans against the card, but still totally worth playing. <laughs> like, a two-mana, three-powered guy that keeps coming back and can crew anything in the deck is just like... Very, very nice to have around. He also activates all of our artifact synergies, and he's just probably the best card in the whole deck. So <laughs> we're going to play all four. I should say he's in contention. There's like three best cards in the deck. I'll talk about them all as we get there, but let's stop off real quick and talk about something that you may have forgotten existed in this format, and that's the two of Forerunner of Slaughter. This card was a favorite of a lot of people when he first came out, but he's sort of fallen by the wayside at this point, and you know, in like the Mardu Vehicles deck, there are definitely better ways you want to utilize your slots, but we're only playing red-black, and we don't want to play expensive cards, so 10 cents is a steal to play a two-mana, three-power guy that gives all of our artifact creatures vehicles included, haste. That is really insane. This is also kind of relevant with Scrap Heap Scrounger. You know, you'll put your Scrap Heap back on the battlefield, and then you can just give it haste that same turn. It can attack the same turn you bring it back, which is kind of a cool trip, too. So, and this works with lots of different stuff in the deck, but at the same time, I think that there are a lot of the cards we're playing are just better, which isn't Forerunner's fault. You know, we've got, like, unlicensed disintegration and all kinds of amazing stuff to play in this deck. So I just don't think that it's worth playing a bunch of copies of Forerunner, but it's it's definitely worth playing at least a couple. The card still works. Here's one of the other best cards in the deck. We're going to play three PNA Lar, and it's one of the best holdovers that um, that we have from Marty Vehicles. You know, this is only like 30 cents right now, and it's great. Like, Pia does so much for us. You know, she makes an artifact and activates all of those artifact synergies, turns all of those on. 
You know, um, as one Redditor put it that I just recently read this, you know, I can't count the number of times I have lost to not being able to block because of being an And that is true. You will win a fair amount of games of just being able to eliminate a flyer from blocking and flying over with an ether, ether spear or something, you know. Um, so P is great for that reason. You know, she makes a flyer herself, which is good with like Wellfast Engineer. We'll see that card in just a second. You know, um, she can pump the flyer. She's a great way to use our mana. The deck really wants a mana sink in case of flooding. This is fantastic flood protection right here. You know, we can sacrifice like Scrap Heap Scrounger to her and get the Scrounger back. That's a cool synergy. That's just like just layers upon layers upon layers of reasons to play a PNA Lar in the deck. She's just absolutely incredible. Here's Wildfast Engineer right here, as a matter of fact. Um, this card has been flying under the radar, but I actually did see it a couple of weeks ago in a list on Star City that, that was in the top eight of an open. So, like, some people are experimenting with this to apparent effect. And I can confirm the card is super good, especially for just 10 cents. Ridiculous. This card has an immediate impact, or near immediate impact, on the game. The turn you play him, he can go ahead and boost a creature at the beginning of the attack step. That's, imp that's incredibly important, you know? He can um, make Bomat Curry a three power guy he can make pna large um a thopter into a three power flyer out of nowhere that's great he can make sky skiff better than heart of kieran in combat which will make people that paid 22 dollars for the heart of kieran really really mad because you paid like 22 cents <laughs> for for both cards put together sky skiff and wellfast engineer so that's always fun it can make fleet well uh, fleet will cruiser a seven power creature like there's just so many good things that you can do with this card in this deck it has an immediate impact on the game and if you play it turn three it can really like make the board that you've built up to that point a lot better so lots of cool stuff <laughs> with this and you know the turn it comes into play it can uh, both boost an artifact creature and crew a vehicle remember Creatures can crew vehicles the turn they come into play. Yes, they can. Look it up. So, like, the turn this comes into play, it can have a bunch, a lot of effect on the game for you, you know? So, love this card so far. And if it stands on the board, stays on the board for more than a turn or two, it can start doing some, like, real damage. Because, like, making your um, Aethersphere Harvester into a 5-5 five, five, flying possible lifelink is crazy. Making your Fleet Wheel into a 7-power thing is crazy. So, like, try the card out. It's actually way better than it looks. Let's talk about the vehicles in the deck for just a second, and we'll go to storybook mode to accomplish that. We're going to play four copies of Sky Skiff, two copies of Ether Sphere Harvester, and two copies of Fleet Wheel Cruiser in this deck. Now, Sky Skiff is obviously not Heart of Kirin, and if you had Heart of Kirin, you should probably play those instead, but Sky Skiff is a great budget replacement. I mean, uh, you know, a, a very, very cheap 2-3 flyer is nice, and any creature in the whole deck can crew the thing, so that's kind of cool, too. Just actually, not so so bad like in a world that didn't have copter or heart of kieran sky skiff might actually see some play but you know the world we live in <laughs> you know we're in budget land right now so we'll play the sky skiff instead of the hearts um ether spear harvester though is a great creature like a really 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 good creature that can block heart of kieran so that's very important to point out this can also block like the odd avison that you'll see every now and again you can also pump it with um pna lar that's cool especially when you've given it lifelink that's awesome so just ether spear is yeah it's a few bucks it's like 350 a piece 325 i think same as um same as scrap heap scrounger but just like scrounger i think it's definitely well worth the money to play this you know it's not like we're playing heart of kieran or anything but we still get to play a very powerful vehicle that has a lot of good things to do in this format and fleet wheel cruiser has come from like a dollar 25 all the way down to a quarter and it's definitely i think worth playing too i mean we could play some of the better vehicles in the format for very very cheap at this point and fleet wheel cruiser is great when it comes down against control and resolves it's good against like let's say you know we're on the play and on um, their turn three they decided to play sahili into a naked board you know it looks safe to play sahili or well, all our turn four we can drop um fleet wheel cruiser and just eat that sahili alive that is a very relevant play that comes up every now and again so remember that um, but Fleet Wheel Cruiser is just a big thing that most of the deck can crew, um, except for like Bomac Courier. So I think it's worth playing because, you know, we can give our vehicles haste already with Forerunner, but it's so important to have haste um, naturally on something that's this big because we can just finish out the game really unexpectedly. It's a great top deck late, and if we can play it on curve, it can often help to just finish the game. But we're going to play some spells in the deck, and we're going to take a cue from the other aggro decks in the format and play a whole bunch of removal. <laughs> that is apparently in vogue right now. Um, and it's definitely the, the right idea. So, with that in mind, let's go back to this thing right here, this, this picture, and I'll talk about the removal. We're going to play two shocks, 
two welding sparks. Look at that. And four unlicensed disintegration um, in the deck. Now, Shock is, I think, just good against other aggro decks and good against the Healy combo. Targets the Healy in response to her negative two. I'm going to be saying that for the next two years. I can't, unless, unless they ban one of these pieces, you know, um, I'll talk about that in a second. But anyway, unless they ban one of these pieces here very, very soon, we're going to have to be worried about that for the next year and a half. So play shock against that combo. Unlicensed uh, Disintegration is just, you know, as we've already talked about, one of the best cards in the entire format, and you will make room for all four of these. It's good against other aggro. It's good against green-black counters. It's good against the Healy combo. Literally every deck in the format can be, you know, in some way foiled by unlicensed disintegration so play the entire playset it is the other the third best card in the deck and it probably is legit the best card in the deck so play it and then welding sparks probably deserves a little bit of explanation i have also seen this in a, in a random list or two um from star city opens and from mtgo lists um welding sparks is actually pretty nice in this deck it is usually at least four damage and if we draw it late it's not a bad top deck because in board stalls and those kind of situations um, it can often do six or seven damage, which can take out anything that Green Black Counters plays. You know, if we have, say, one artifact on the battlefield, this can break up Felidar Guardian. Um, kill it at instant speed, so that's cool. You know, it's it's it can take out almost anything that Vehicles plays, you know. It can take out Heart of Kirin if we have just one artifact on the battlefield. It's instant speed, so Welding Sparks is nice, and it's better in some ways than Murder. I can hear you back there in the back, or actually probably in the front row, telling me that I should just play Murder instead. Actually, again, we're a very budget mana base here, so we already don't have a whole lot of black sources, and they're just, you know, I don't feel like we'd be that comfortable generating double black. Nothing in the deck costs double black, so I'm just not comfortable doing it. I actually think Welding Sparks is a little bit better. There's 23 lands in this deck, and the Foreboding Ruins are about $275 or $3 a piece, but definitely worth playing. 100%, this is another $3 or $4 card that I feel like we can splurge on a little bit, because like we just really want to have the fixing. I do not want to go just Mountains and Swamps in this deck, because we're not playing a whole lot of black, but the black we are playing is very important. You know, we're playing Scrappy Scrounger, we're playing a License Disintegration, just those two cards right there are reason enough to have to have black man whenever we need it by turn three at the very latest. So want to play some dual lands in this deck to ensure that we can pull that off. Here's our sideboard right here, and we're actually going to do some in-depth sideboard guides here in just a second, so I'm not going to spend too long on the individual cards. Um, Shock is against the Healy combo. Pick the brain, ditto, ditto, transgress the mind as well. Release the Gremlins is in there against Mardu, um, which is a bad matchup for us because they just, they're our deck, but better. Um, <laughs> Welding Sparks is in there against Green Black, um, and then To the Slaughter is in there against Planeswalkers. As promised just a second ago, here's some in-depth sideboard guides for you. I may try this from now on. All depends on how well received this is, but you guys have been asking for it for a while, so I don't think you'll mind. And the Sahili matchup. We are fairly bad in this matchup. We're actually pretty bad against all three decks, so we have to be better in games two and three. Um, we're going to take out the Welding Sparks, all four Weldfast Engineers, the two Ether Spear Harvester, and the Bomac Courier. All of these cards are just not quite as good in this matchup. And we're going to put in all four Pick the Brains, another copy, or just one copy of Transgress, two copies of Shock, and two copies of To the Slaughter here. To the Slaughter is to take out um, Sahili. Healy or Felidar Guardian at instant speed. They could do either one of those. Um, shock is to, is to break up the combo too. Just more pieces against that. And then Pick the Brain and Transgress are just ridiculously good against any control build right now. Now, possibly our worst matchup is against any of the green-black variants, whether they be Energy or green-black Counters or green-black Delirium. They just have this long game that crushes us if they get to it, and things like Fatal Push will make sure that they get to it. So we have a fairly bad matchup against them. Let's see what we do to shore that up. We're going to take out the Shocks because they are just bad in this matchup, and we're going to take out an Inventor's Apprentice and a Bomac Courier. Because um, they just they lose relevance very fast in this matchup, and we're going to put in two welding sparks to have something that goes a little bit higher than shock and kills their guys easily. And we're going to have also um, to the slaughter added to the deck because it can also take out anything technically, and it can take out things like Liliana if they're playing it too. So I just think that to the slaughter is a little bit better than either of the two creatures that we're taking out, and it's worth the addition. 
Now, versus Mardu, that's also pretty tough because, again, they're just our deck but with better cards. So we have to at least plan a little bit. We're going to take out the Sky Skiff, the two Fleet Wheel Cruisers because the haste just isn't as good against aggro and a lot of their creatures can block it and kill it. Um, and then a Bomat Courier and also a Swamp, we can lose a land in this matchup. It's, it's fine. And then we'll put in a Shock for their small creatures, um, a Welding Sparks for, um, you know, just extra removal. And then we'll put in the best card in this matchup, the three of Release the Gremlins, which can really ruin Mardu's day. It is easily the best card against them. And here are your power rankings right here. Final score of 60 points, which is pretty good for a deck that's only about $40. On TCG Player, it could reach as high as 45 depending on what condition the cards you're buying are in. I mean, put it this way, we get to play two cards that a lot of decks are afraid of and have main deck built-in answers to. Like, Unlicensed Disintegration, people are really afraid of that card. Um, people are really afraid of Scrap Heap Scrounger in some builds, and like, there are main deck answers specifically for that card, and a bunch of sideboard answers too. Like, Scrap Heap Scrounger is the only reason that anyone's playing Flaying Tendrils in their sideboard at all. So, like, like Scrap Heap Scrounger is a serious card. We get to play a bunch of cards that people are actually very wary of right now. And for that reason, this might be the best way to play budget right now. You know, you get to play a really cheap deck, but you also get to play some of literally the best cards in the whole format. Tapped out for now. That's all I got. Take it to the sideboard and let me know how you felt about this one. What could I have put in that I didn't put in? The answer is usually budget, but you know, who knows? I may have missed a couple of things. Like there's reasons not to play Gifted Etherborn. I don't feel like we could go like turn one Inventor's Apprentice, turn two Gifted Etherborn. That's kind of tough with this mana base, so I didn't end up playing that. But there's, there's lots of other stuff that I could have played but didn't. So ask me why down there in the comments. And what are we doing next time? Well, a couple of things here. I've got a couple of deck techs that I want to keep a little bit under wraps because I may actually scrap one one of those and I don't want to promise it to you without and then you get excited and I don't end up doing it so I'm, I'm gonna keep a couple of projects under wraps but that means that now it's your chance to tell me what you just want to see and I I haven't done that in a while I haven't just asked you guys what you want so what decks do you want to see now's your chance but the next video I do just so you know is going to be the 50k Q&A you know that we've reached 50,000 subscribers because I just won't shut up about it <laughs> over the past week I'm just really really happy and stoked about it and kind of still mind blown so yeah 50,000 subscribers the Q&A is going to be the next thing I do so look for that in your inbox and I've got a bunch of your questions you guys sent a lot of questions this time so I'm gonna try to get through all of them <laughs> You attempt to. So that's going to be next time. And we also have to do the top five cards that we want in Amon Ket. I, every time a new set's coming out, I like to do a, um, uh, you know, a top five cards I'd like to see. Not reprints, just original things that I'd like to see in the set. So, you know, that'll always be fun. And you guys like going to the comments and telling me how broken my cards are. So look forward to that. And one more thing before I get out of here. I, um, earlier in the video, I was talking about um, banning a piece of Sahili combo. And we'll see if that happens really, really soon and cryptically. Um, some of you who are in the know, and a lot of you probably don't know this already. But in any case, Monday... Monday is announcement day. That is the day where we will get um, banning and restricting announcements for all formats. So keep that in the back of your head. Uh, it has been five weeks since the Pro Tour, which means that it is time to make a banning and restricting announcement. That coming on Monday. So look out for that because who knows what's going to happen as far as standard is concerned. We don't know. So look out for that. The whole format may change and we may not have to worry about Sahili Combo for the next year and a half. I'm starting to think that might be great. But anyway, that's all we got for now. I'm Dev from SBMTG. If you enjoyed the content, best thing you can do for a YouTuber is like that content because it'll give me more exposure, more people see the video, and then they'll like it, blah, blah, blah. So just hit the like button. Just please do that. You can also sub if you're new and then you can um, hit the bell to make sure you get notifications. And I've got a lot of stuff coming out here soon. I'm in Ket Spoilers. We'll start officially from the mothership on the 3rd of April. That is super soon, you guys. And we may actually get a couple of spoilers just before that, like the weekend before that. We might get a couple of things. I don't know. They have. I don't know. They haven't told me anything. But like, just the way these things usually work, we, we might get something even before the official spoiler release date. So stick with us. It will not be long now. And I will see you guys next time. I'm Deb from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards.